Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Adam and today we're going to be focusing on comparing two stocks that are both in the food industry but a very niche industry that is growing rapidly, namely the vegetarian and vegan um, food industry. And these two companies are kind of contrast in a sorts but they're both players in this industry and they're the Very Good Food Company which is a fast growing Canadian based company headquartered in Victoria, British Columbia, and Beyond Meat, which is a more established dominant play market cap of eight billion right now uh, out of Los Angeles called Beyond Meat, okay? And I actually owned the Very Good Food Company um, two or three weeks ago and I sold out when it reached $5 a share. And I'm actually thinking of going back in the stock if it reaches a reasonable level um, and I'll show you exactly where that is. But again, we're going to be comparing these two stocks and which one I think is the better buy, which I'll tell you right now um, that I do think it is a very good food company and not Beyond Meat, which I'll explain in the video, but I just wanted to say that outright. And we're go we'll go through these bullet points one by one uh, throughout the video, but if you don't wanna stay till the end, I have all these points right here if uh, you don't have the time. Okay, so first off, I wanna say that with Beyond Meat, uh, it's again, it's more established, it's, um, it has its products internationally and it's, an, it's a recognized brand. Um, it's actually partnering or is supposedly partnering with McDonald's. We'll see that there's some confusion there of its uh, McPlant based burger. Um, it's still up over 65% year to date, even though it dropped like over 25% on Q3 earnings. Um, however, it has been downtrending over the past month, which we'll see. And it missed third quarter results on the bottom and top line, which is uh, not very good. We'll just say that at the least, okay? Uh, the very good food company, so it's a smaller company, which it, therefore it means it has more growth potential. Uh, it's incredibly volatile. Um, so the stock, as we can see, reached one day, it reached like $5.60 on in one day, and then it just dropped all the way back down to like $4. And again, now we can see it's trading at like $3.60. So huge fluctuations. Uh, it's backed by influ influencers, which is both a positive and negative thing. So we'll see um, financial education backed up the very good food company, and we can see over the past month since he started making videos about it, it shot the stock up tremendously, right? So um, there is a potential pump and dump play happening here um, where investor, investors will just get out of the stock because it's been uh, <laughs> pumped by over like 200%, right? And it plans to expand internationally, uh, namely into California. And there are a backlog of orders on its uh, food, okay? So we're gonna go through all of these and we're actually gonna start with Beyond Meat because it's a simpler play. So again, we can see year to date, it's actually up, you know, 65%, so pretty damn good, right? And if we look at, uh, you know, the max here, we'll actually see that it's, its opening price was like $66 and it's still up a significant amount uh, since then by 87%, okay? So pretty damn good. And we can see that the market cap is $7.8 billion. So we do see that there is quite a big market for um, vegan based foods, all right? However, if we'll see over the past month, it has dropped by you know over 30%, close to 35% just over the past month, right? And we can see over earnings, the stock dropped by like 17% and it's down by about 1% after hours today, right? And why is this? Well, pretty much they, uh, swung a loss in third quarter and missed analyst estimates for both earnings per share and revenue. Okay. Um, and so they're saying that CEO Ethan Brown said that customers aren't stockpiling beyond meatless products like they were at the beginning of the pandemic. Okay. Uh, however, this is kind of questionable as we'll see just because uh, that doesn't really happen with beyond meat foods, which are typically eaten, not, you know, they're not stockpiled in the freezer. They're generally eaten. Uh, they're kept in the fridge and then, made a couple days later or a week later, right? Um, and then there's actually confusion on the McDonald's play, you know, whereas Beyond Me came out and said that, yeah, they're partnering with McDonald's to produce their McPlant. McDonald's was actually hesitant to say that uh, they had anything to do with McPlant, as we'll watch right here. The CEO of McDonald's did speak to our own Carl Quintanilla earlier today and said that while they did partner with Beyond Meat in testing out those uh, Beyond Meat's patties in the Canadian market, he was hesitant to commit that Beyond Meat would be part of the launch in the U.S. of the McPlant sandwich. However, Beyond Meat... 
again, so there's just some confusion there, which is generally not good uh, for a company to come out and say one thing, whereas another bigger company, McDonald's, comes out and say, oh, hold on, hold on. That's actually not the fact, okay? So again, we'll see here, they had a loss per share of 28 cents uh, versus earnings of five cents per share that was expected. Revenue was 94.4 million versus 132.8 million that was expected. So a uh, huge revenue miss there, right? Uh, and as we'll see here, um, that shares of Beyond Meat plunged 22% on Tuesday after the plant-based burger maker reported a large revenue miss and slow sales growth in the third quarter, right? Um, and we already said this. So again, he said that attributed the third quarter loss to consumers freezer loading in the second quarter at the onset of the pandemic, right? Um, and analysts at JP Morgan said it's unclear why the plant-based burger maker had such a weak third quarter, okay? Um, and investors were also confused about the scope of Beyond Meat's collaboration with McDonald's in launching the new McPlant. So to what extent will they profit from this new McPlant that's coming out from McDonald's, right? Um, and so what they're saying is that, you know, CEO said pretty much that consumers were panic buying the product and they had freezer loaded at the onset of the pandemic, right? Or whereas analysts at JP Morgan said that uh, it's unclear why these the third quarter was so weak and Beyond Meat's explanation was not backed by meaningful data, All right? Um, Beyond mentioned nothing about freezer loading when reporting Q2 results, they said. And we frankly have never really heard of freezer loading as a thing. Typically, it is much harder to pack a freezer than a pantry. Uh, right, so people, this is just saying that people will uh, stock up on things like cans, things, things that are non-perishable uh, versus like Beyond Meat products. Moreover, Beyond's products are generally sold and stored fresh, not frozen. So we have a lot of questions about what actually happened to sales in Q3. So to me, this is pretty concerning and um, therefore I don't generally like Beyond Meat as much. I do uh, understand that it's a more established company, but you know, if we're looking at the chart here, it's still, you know, quite incredibly volatile. And I do think that it has more room to run down, especially with a huge Q3 miss, right? Um, and therefore, I would be careful when investing in Beyond Meat, okay? And of course, the better play that I like, and I actually might get back into, is the very good food company, right? We can see that, you know, swings like this are actually quite normal, right? Down 10%. This actually might be because there's an association between you know, of course, a very good food company, that's a vegan company, uh, its stock went down. So, of course, just by association, uh, very good food company goes down. That might be the case. It also just might be natural fluctuations, people getting out of the market. We can see the monthly trend. The stock is up over 100%, right? Up, you know, six-month trend. The stock is up 400%, which is just ridiculous, right? That's just crazy, right? Uh, and here we'll see the volatility of the stock, right? So I got in around like this range right here. And the stock I sold at around $5, but this stock actually shot up to like $5.67 and then, you know, backtracked down to like $3.60. So we can see that there is this downtrend coming here, which I think may continue for a couple of days. We're looking at the one month chart here. Um, and then if it goes back down to, you know, around $2, uh, $2.60, even around $3 range, I'd be happy to pick up some, some more shares of the Very Good Food Company as a speculative play, okay? And the reason why I like this is because, of course, you know, when they have like a backlog of orders, um, their their food actually tastes like real meat. I actually try their food, and I mean, just like uh, I have a picture right here. It's just like look at this. It looks like an actual burger, right? Like it's just you know, it's just insane. It's like nice grill lines. It's just a very good patty, and um, you know, I, I really like the food of this company. So one, it has awesome website, uh, you're able to order. Um, and of course there's a backlog of orders, their food, try different stuff. Um, you can actually subscribe to contact them and they're very user friendly, very open. And of course, one reason I like what I like about this company is they have a significant growth in all of its platforms. So increase in visit sites to, uh, 447,169, which it represents a, 1,591% increase, um, an increase in average order value of 108%, number of orders by close to 1,000%, and conversion rate of 155%, right? So their their products are sticky, right? When people try the Very Good Food Company's products, they tend to stick with it. And of course, one thing that I do like is, um, of course, that this is a fad or, or, you know, it's not necessarily fad, but right now it's fashionable to become vegetarian and vegan. And I think that this will last 
uh, as long as you know the environmental um, sector is booming, right? So I do think that you know companies like this will succeed in the coming years, right? Especially as the movement towards more vegan and vegetarian based foods um, increase as environmental concerns increase as well, right? And we can see that online communities of both Facebook and Instagram followers experience growth of 627% and 498% uh, respectively, um, and both have recently surpassed 30,000 on each platform, right? So this has huge growth potential, All right? We can see that their revenues for Q2 2020 uh, were 1.1 billion, an increase of close to 400% year over year, gross profit margin of 42% over a six month period, an improvement from 34%, so just, you know, incredible all across the board, right? Outstanding debt reduced by 1.1 million. That's important. Um, and net loss was three cents per common share. Of course, a loss is common in rapidly growing companies as they're trying to scale production, which we'll also see here, right? So the very good food company announces distribution partnership with North America's leading wholesale distributor and ex expanded points of retail, okay? Um, so namely, the very good food company recently entered into a new distribution agreement with UNFI Canada to distribu distribute their products uh, across Canada, first focusing on the East Coast, right? So not only that, um, the very good food company is also expanding into California. So it's pleased to announce that it is proceeding with its plan expansion into the U.S. market with a new strategically located California production facility that will significantly increase their production capacity and support growth in the company's wholesale and e-commerce sales in the States, right? Um, so this is something that I really, really like. Okay, but again, one thing that we do have to be careful of um, is their promotional activity on sites like YouTube, right? So we'll see here. Um, so since the date of the initial IPO, the company has been featured across a wide variety of media platforms, receiving significant publicity in connection with increasing interest in the plant-based food tech sector. So these include Fox Business in connection with the Pamela Anderson partnership, VegCon, Economist, Motley Fool, and most recently YouTube influencer with uh, close over half a million subscribers, account by the name of uh, Financial Education. I believe they actually forgot to name uh, my channel, so Sanofsky Socks. Uh, I like to point that out with my, um, you know, 415 subscribers. Anyways, uh, side point. The company cautions readers that the aforementioned media content was created by third parties with whom the company has no relationship and the content was neither reviewed, authorized, nor approved by the company. In addition, no financial consideration was paid in connection with this content. So what this means is that, you know, they have no relationship with people who uh, promoted this stock and uh, they do not pay these people to promote their stock, right? Uh, however, they do have a third party uh, provider, Future Money Trends, to increase awareness of its publicly traded shares. And these are paid. While FMT is a paid third party service provider to the Very Good Food Company, the company had no knowledge of this distribution of the promotional materials, blah, blah, blah. So they are promoting stock and they are paying to promote this stock. Uh, however, obviously they're not paying to promote it uh, wherever it was promoted, as we can see over here, right? So um, that's one thing that is very, very good to be clear about, right? It's one thing to promote your stock under the table and, you know, to uh, sign tr transactions with YouTubers and with uh, popular individuals. But at least they come out and they say that, no, we did not pay these people to promote our content. However, we did pay uh, this person right here. So this to me does sound like, you know, um, a pretty honest business and honest CEO that they're actually saying that, yes, we do pay third party service providers to increase knowledge of our stock. However, uh, these people we do not pay uh, to promote our stock. Okay, so and I think that's very important. Right. So if we're looking at just again, the bullet points overall, I do have to say that uh, the very good food company is a win, in my opinion, uh, just looking at the price and looking at the downward trend of this stock over the past, you know, couple of weeks, I do think that this stock has more room to move down. Okay, and like I said again, anywhere around the three dollars a share, uh, I will be buying a position in the very good food food company. And I think since this company is so volatile, you know, one thing you could do is just place a limit order, right, at around like three dollars a share. And uh, if it does reach that amount, you know, just scoop up some shares, right? And um, maybe you'll be happy you did in a couple years time, right? And of course, this company right now valued at $260 million Canadian. So uh, 
like very much a penny stock, right? So if you can scoop up some shares now, we know that the market is huge, right? If we're just looking at beyond meets a market cap, it's like close to 8 billion US. We know that there's a market there, right? So if you buy these shares now, most likely you're not going to lose money five years down the loan line, especially if they're expanding at the rate that they are, right? However, I do think that you will be able to have this company uh, at a much better deal, maybe even around $3 a share Canadian. Again, trades under the tickle symbol, V-E-R-Y under the Canadian exchange, and I believe V-R-Y-F-F um, under the over-the-counter exchange. Um, but yeah, these are just my two comparisons of the Very Good Food Company and Beyond Meat. I do believe the Very Good Food Company does outperform Beyond Meat. Uh, based on the analysis that I just did. And again, if you did like this video, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time, guys.